welcome back to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking and commenting on all my videos. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Today, I want to talk to you guys about tips on dental hygiene, ways that you can basically survive dental hygiene without losing your mind, and just things that can like help make it more fun and enjoyable. So these are 12 tips on how to survive dental hygiene. Tip number one, study before you socialize. Y'all, today's society is all about being on social media, being on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, showing off what you're doing. Meanwhile, your books are collecting dust. They are crying over there because you haven't read them in I don't know how long. You don't even know what chapter you in. That's got to stop, guys. You have to remember your career is very important. I had to tell myself that I was so bad being on TikTok. I wasn't even making TikTok videos. I was just watching everybody, thinking that I can just scroll, 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 and I can study last minute. But it's not fair for me. It's not fair for me and all the money and time I spent in school. You have to do better, and you have to make sure your pri your priorities are in check. Don't, y'all, social media is not going anywhere. This is the day and age of social media. It's actually, it's gonna get even worse. So just keep in mind your career, keep in mind your goals because that's important. You want to have a great career and I don't want no C plus person in my mouth. That's just facts. I need someone who knows what they're doing at all times and doesn't have to rely on people. So make sure you guys, you study. If you lose sleep, so what? You're having, you're going to have a career that's going to provide you with so much more. So you're going to lose a couple of hours of sleep, but it's worth it. It's going to be worth it in the end. So yeah, just keep in mind what you're doing, why you're doing it. And if you need to, there are ways that you can limit yourself on certain apps. Like you can put a timer on. So once you run out of time, it's study time. Like let's, if you don't want to study first, at least put yourself on a timer. So that way you can kind of keep your priorities in check. So number two, this kind of segues into what I was saying about studying. If you don't like to carry your books around like most people do, then I would suggest getting like an app. There's all kind of apps. There are all kinds of apps that you can use. There's apps like Student RDH. There are apps called Immersify Dental, which is really cool. I just found this out on um, TikTok, and I will link all that below because it's legit like a clinical setting on your phone. It's almost like a game, and you can compete with other people. So you can like actually have a real patient in your, your chair and just you know provide them the best care that you possibly can. So it's really neat, and I'm gonna tag you guys I'm gonna tag the uh, link down below so you guys can check that out. But it's really cool. It's not sponsored. Should be though. Y'all hit me up. Anyway, so apps like Immersify, Student RDH, and there's another one, a Quizlet, can really help you guys to stay, you know, on the right path of studying. It doesn't have to be, you know, the whole time. Of course not. You just want to make sure that you're still refreshing yourself, and so that you're not kind of like forgetting things. Because for me. When I'm not studying, I forget stuff. Like if I'm not constantly feeding myself knowledge and information, I will come, I will lose it. Like I just, it is what it is. So I've learned that studying constantly really does help. It, and it doesn't even feel like studying sometimes because once you're into it, once you're in that rhythm, you enjoy it. Like I love learning, but it's more like the process of getting to learn. Like, oh, I gotta get my books out of my backpack. I get the highlighters out, set up and all that stuff. But once I'm in there, we're good. Like, let's go. So. Kind of getting that mindset of studying isn't really studying. Try not to make it so like a chore. Make it more fun for you guys. Whatever works. Watch YouTube videos. Um, you know, study sessions with your friends if they act right. Because most of the times, study sessions end up being hangout sessions, and we go out to the bar. So <laughs> just make sure you know your boundaries. Set boundaries to where you know what you're doing and you stand conscious of your actions, basically. So yeah, that's number two. And number three is follow people who inspire you. I love to follow people that help inspire me in whatever I'm doing. So specifically dental hygiene, of course, I follow people like Taja. There's another girl, oh my God, what's her name? I'll put her name right here because I'm not gonna remember. Um, just people that inspire me, that's like me or um, in the same situation that I'm going through who understand, that really helps make a difference when it comes to inspiration, because sometimes you feel like you're the only one going through a certain thing, and that's not true. So it really helps to find people who understand and who can relate. And like I said, who inspire. Like Taja is doing her thing over there. Like she is legit doing what I want to do. She's a dental hygienist. 
She's living in Atlanta. It's like she's just enjoying her life and enjoying the fruits of her labor, in which she should. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Y'all catch me next year and see what's going to happen. But I love it. And just following people like that help you to stay, um, like I said, inspired. Because sometimes you feel so down in the dumps. Like I remember before I had a year to go, I was like, is this ever going to end? I am 26 years old. I already have a degree. And I still feel like I'm not doing what I need to do. And you can't rush time. It's a set time that I'm going to graduate. It's a set number of steps I need to take to get to where I'm going. So just to know that people have went through the same steps, went through the same trials and tribulations of thinking that they're not going to make it through and seeing them on top and finally seeing like the light at the end of the tunnel, it makes a difference. So you don't have to follow people to like be them. Just follow people to get a way, a get a sense of what they're doing and like, man, that can be me one day. They went through what I'm going through. So it really helps and it really just gives you a, a like a new bounce or burst of energy because sometimes, like I said, it does get kind of depressing. I don't want to say that word, but it is what it is. So yeah, follow people. I'll see if I can tag some more people in my description box just because I like those people and they help me out a lot. Even when I'm not even looking for help, when I just see it, it makes me happy. So that's a good um, thing to do if you're feeling kind of, you know, sad. <laughs> um, Oh, number four is one of my favorites. Your peers will be your best friends, your cohort, your classmates. Y'all, and don't be their friends because you want something. That's not the way to do things. Be their friends because you truly enjoy them. My cohort especially, I love them dearly. Like, each and every one of them is just a character. And, like, sometimes you need to lean on one. You need to lean on a different person. Like, everybody has their role and it's so nice like you have your goofy people you have your people that help you study and people like want to go out and have fun after clinic it's just really fun and so what i get what i mean to say by have peers that you're friends with is you need to like say for instance you're in clinic and you are running late and you know you need to set up your operatory for your patient and you're running late and so you message your your friends your classmates on um social media or uh you know group me or whatever and you ask some guys can someone please set up my op most of them are gonna already know what op you like like we haven't really switched our operatories unless we you know had to switch ca duties but for the most part they're gonna know where your op is and they're gonna set up all those barriers for you in the nick of time because you're not gonna have enough time before the um the uh meetup help me i can't even think of the word but you know, you always have your uh, team meeting before um, you go to get your patient. So you're always going to have a team meeting. So you know you're not going to make it in time. Being friends with your cohort helps tremendously. You just never know what you're going to need, guys. So you, don't take them for granted, okay? Be there for one another. Like, I love my cohort so much because we're always celebrating something. We're always having fun. We're always sharing information with each other. And not being selfish helps so much. Just remember... You're going to need each other. You think you're the baddest, but you're not. So make sure you are being genuine and make sure you are just helping each other. Be a team player because if you're being selfish, that's not going to cut it. Because I'm not going to want to help you if you're being selfish, okay? Your team will help you in so many ways. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. Oh. Number five, honey. Number five is, eh, it's something to wear. If you're good at cleaning your clothes, you won't need a, a bunch of scrubs, but I would suggest having a couple of sets of scrubs just because I know I only have one day of clinic per week. I know that sounds great, but when you're busy working the rest of the week, you will forget that you need to clean your clothes. And then the next week comes clinic on a Monday. Oh man, yesterday was my wash day. I forgot. And you have dirty clothes. So are you going to put those nasty clinic scrubs back on or are you going to have another set waiting for you that's fresh? So just keep that in mind. I know scrubs can be expensive, but typically if you're following people, like I said, following people that have discount codes or actually if you go to the physical location where they sell scrubs, most of them will have a student discount. I know the one that I go to has a 15% discount, which which is amazing so and that actually does help a lot um once you realize your scrubs are like 55 dollars for a set 
and they put that 15% on, it really does make a difference. So it's really nice. Make sure you always ask for a student discount before you do pay or some type of discount to where it's not really, you know, hindering you from buying it because you really need scrubs, an extra set. You just never know what'll happen, guys. And you don't want to be late trying to wash your scrubs if you only have one set. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's all kind of like different clothes, different brands that you can buy. They don't have to be the top of the top Grey's Anatomy. They can be Cherokee. Cherokee is still good. Don't think that, you know, you wearing Cherokee means that you don't know what you're doing. It has nothing to do with that. It means you're being wise with your money. And it means that once I graduate, I'm going to be buying whatever I want to buy. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to be at the bottom forever, guys. Just focus on what you can. Control what you can. You'll be great. Okay. Okay. This is, this is important because you need to make sure you are using your time wisely. When you are in class or when you are in clinic and you don't have an hour lunch, don't go down the street to Chick-fil-A with their long lines and wait 30 minutes to eat and you gotta travel 15 minutes back for clinic plus traffic because it's lunchtime. Guys, I know y'all want to eat good every day. I know it. I understand because I'm a foodie. But keep in mind that that hour goes by so fast. Breaks go by faster than clinic hours. I'm just telling y'all that now. It's an anomaly. But Pack your lunch, pack your lunch, make it healthy because being healthy is important as well. Make your lunch, you know, full enough to where you're you're satisfied, but not full to where you're sleeping in clinic. Like you can't be sleep, um, you will be draining. Don't pack like pastas and stuff, but pack something light like a sandwich, chips, something, you know, baked chips, something healthy to where you're satisfied. And also that hour can mean, you know, you doing your homework or you setting up for a new patient in clinic. It can mean a lot. So be efficient with your time because it really does help. I know for me, I might not do my homework, but I'll go set up in clinic or finish some soap notes for my last patient. So that next half of my clinic hours is me um, already prepared for my new uh, patient. That might be a new patient to where you need to figure out your information uh, so you can give it to them, their medical history and all that good stuff. You can go ahead and fill that in. You're, you're not going to be performing procedures so the dentist doesn't have to be in clinic. You're not actually uh, in the patient's mouth. So you can go ahead and get your information down. That way everything is smooth. You don't have to worry about asking for help. You already have this stuff prepared. So use your lunch break wisely. You don't have to sit for a whole hour to eat. I know you want to, but it's so, it's so much nicer to have everything prepared for clinic. Number seven, I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again, keep everything. Keep all your books. I don't care if it was from prereqs. Keep everything because you will, you don't know everything, y'all. And you're going to forget, like I said, I forget things if I'm not continually refreshing myself and, you know, like looking at everything. Keep everything, guys, because you will never know what you'll need to learn for boards. I'm like, oh, man, I remember. I remember. I can't remember. And I sold my books already. No, don't do that. You will have your chance to sell your books, guys. People are always looking for books to buy. Don't sell your books, keep your books, keep your radiology books. I'm looking at my books on my bookshelf. Keep your anatomy books, microbiology, all of that is important. You didn't you didn't learn it for no reason. It's all important. Building blocks, they're important for you to remember. That's foundational information that you need to keep in mind, especially for boards. Now, when you're in clinic, yeah, but <laughs> for boards, the thing that you need to pass in order to practice, you need that. So keep your books. Just keep them, y'all. Please, please keep them. Oh, another thing, y'all. Okay, I know myself. Beginning um, dental hygiene, I was not really a planner, I, and I'm really a procrastinator still. But we working on that. God is working on me. Um, get a planner. Get a calendar. I know sometimes it seems like, oh, I'm never going to use it. I thought the same thing. I feel like I was just buying it again. I always buy planners. I had the best intentions on using my, my planners. I start out like a good week. <laughs> and then slowly but surely, it's somewhere collecting dust. But I'm being more um, proactive with my learning. I'm setting schedules. When you set a schedule and you abide by that and you're constant with it, it makes a difference, y'all. You won't even realize that you're doing it because sometimes it becomes clockwork. Like, oh, it's time. It's time to go study. I just got off of work. Let me go ahead and study 30 minutes. 
that way, you know, at least you study. And if you have a pop quiz or something, it's not a surprise to you. You know the information because you're used to learning at a certain, you know, pace. So plan it. If you need a small planner, big planner, plan on your wall that you can write on. Do whatever you need to do to keep that information, you know, in front of you so you remember what's coming. Write everything out. When you get your syllabus beginning the semester, if you if they give you dates on when you're getting um, tests, homework due, write it all out. Highlight it, color code it so you'll know what's expected because they're not going to be that's not their fault that you forgot everything. It's on you. They gave you the information. You sign the syllabus. They have, they document, okay? So make sure you are keeping yourself accountable. Write everything down. Ask your, your peers if you need help writing everything down. Google Calendar is an amazing app because it links literally everything. You even have, I think if you're using Canvas, they have ways to where you can set remind or well, not reminders but emails so that it'll email you when things are due brilliant genius so use that explore different methods of remembering things because it's so many different apps and technologies out there now that you probably wouldn't have even expected back then so just keep that in mind number nine baby number nine um this is important when you're starting clinic um Cause when I first started hygiene school, I didn't know that I had to find my own patients. I was like, okay, they gonna come in because people know that they need to clean their teeth. They just gonna come in, and I don't have to worry about finding nobody. No, especially after uh, COVID, people are scared for their lives, um, and they think that you know, going into a medical uh, field is gonna have them at a higher risk for getting COVID or whatever else they they might think they'll get. That's not true, especially when you're in a field like mine. When I tell you, we set up barriers like no other. We are like a 2319. If we see something, we're shutting it down. We're cleaning it. We're gonna re uh, put everything back up. That's it, because we have to make sure that we are taking care of not just the patients. So, but that's aside the point. You need to go ahead and start finding patients. Um, uh, it's more difficult than you think. You might think that, oh, oh yeah, my grandma is gonna come. She's gonna. You can't assume that anybody's gonna be your patient. You can't do that because you will be hurt. You will be crying like I can't believe my friend uh, didn't want to come help me. She know I need to graduate. No, boo boo. Because your friend doesn't owe you anything at the end of the day. You can ask nicely. Can you please come? Make sure you get them all the information. This will be a longer time than normal clinic um offices because i am a student make sure you keep that in mind um kids will be your best friend i personally don't want to go into pediatrics because i've seen what kids do but kids are quick easy you know um completion in and out but of course you're going to need more than just kids different levels and all that good stuff but for the most part if you start out with kids especially during the summertime when you know they're going to be out hey i'll pick your child up i'll feed them i'll take them home make sure they have dinner all that good stuff if you give people reasons or um what's the word i'm looking for give people incentives there we go then they will more than likely be more willing to come they'll actually think about it instead of being like no i don't want to come because it's too long da, da, da. give people reasons of why they should come it's cheaper. If you don't have insurance, we will still uh, take you in because we don't have to worry about insurance. We are, we're students, so we're not really practicing. So that way, people will be more inclined to come in, especially people who are of the less fortunate. Um, you can help with bus routes. You can go send out posters and flyers to um, ho uh, homeless shelters and retirement homes. People still need their teeth clean, even if they don't have teeth, believe it or not. You will learn that later on if you haven't, but um, you still need to clean your, your oral, you still need oral health care, basically is what I'm trying to say. So um, list out reasons why you need it and why coming to me, your um, dental professional, will be the best thing ever. We'll get the best cleaning because you have to have multiple checks behind each uh, set or um, step that you do because you need to make sure you're thor being thorough, you're getting all those spots, you're getting that calculus off and all that other good stuff. So 
you will there's benefits to coming to a um a, a school versus being out in the real field because a lot of people don't have that same care have that same mindset of when they're in school so keep that in mind guys when y'all are searching for um patients just and start now start now make sure you have a long list don't just stop at the the um the number the maximum number that you need for completions make it long because you need to make sure that if that person cancels i can call them if that person cancels i can call them if i'm quick enough i can have two people at the same time at the same day just it's so many different moving parts you got to stay on your toes so make sure you have all the information written out guys their schedules like oh i can come on a tuesday can't do that day i'm off this day so many different things that you can do so keep that in mind for when you're looking for patients start early okay what number are we on i have my stuff down here so i can see okay um and when it comes to boards guys the best thing you can do is like i've always been saying is just study a big thing when it comes to boards is the AQs. Um, I'm sure you guys already know what AQ is. We started that way before clinic. AQs are very important. Those are questions that are basically pulled by the board to use in the actual um, written portion or whatever they wanna call it uh, for the board. So when you're studying, after you've read, after you've done your homework to, to get more of an idea of how you'll be tested for the boards, Use your AQs because it's really neat. Um, once you go into it and once you start testing yourself, you'll see what percentage of people passed this certain question, what percentage of people didn't pass this percent this um, question. Um, what do you need to work on? Are you a mastery level? Are you a novice? It really helps you to keep in mind what you need to focus on. What are your weak spots? What are you strong in? What do I need to focus on more on? It's really good. Um, and if you don't know what it is, just ask your instructors because they'll know what it is. I promise you. Um, everybody use AQs. So, AQs, Quizlets, apps, those are, that's how you study for your boards. I'm not even close to my boards and they've been hounding us about that. But that's, it's really important for you to know what to study and how to study. And number 11, I hope I'm not skipping a number. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, number 11 is... Um, number 11 is do not stop learning. Don't ever stop learning. Don't ever think that you know enough to be the best and you don't need to learn anything else. You will always, always, always be learning something. Um, especially when you're out in the field. Please, y'all, even oh, even people that have been working in the field 15 plus years still have to relearn things, still have to learn about new technology, new advances in dental hygiene. Um, you will be taking CE courses. You will be learning for the rest of your life, at least as long as you'll be um, in clinic and practicing. Um, CE courses are ways to um, keep you updated. You'll have to relearn things and learn about new ways to clean, new ways to take care of people, new everything so and you'll have to do that to keep your license which is crazy i know you would think that in order for you to pass your boards you only need to take it one time and quote unquote you don't have to worry about it again but you have to refresh yourself because things are always changing so don't ever think that once you graduate you don't have to learn another thing because maybe you will be in for a surprise okay you will have to take ce courses i think like 12 hours i can't remember exactly but once you look up the if you know where you want to work and you look up the board place there then they can tell you what you need to do in the requirements um it's interesting to see but it's not hard guys like you already know what you'll be doing you just kind of have to refresh yourself and learn about new things that um they have found and new ways that they want to implement um the process of care and practicing so that's that and number 12 is doo -doo -doo -doo, my little drum roll um have fun I know I just gave you guys a lot of information, but I love what I'm doing. I'm not even practicing yet, and I, I feel like I'm working already. Like, it's so, like, clinic alone has you feeling like you are, you just pulled a 12-hour shift. Like, where's my check? And it feels that way because my instructors and my school has done such an amazing job of just making sure everything is on point because um, it, that's just what it is. They're setting you up 
to do exactly what you're doing here and just take that and put it in when you're practicing. Of course, you don't have to do all those steps and instructor steps because they're not gonna be there. You're graduating, but they will have you so ready. Like I said, it feels like the real deal thing. Um, I remember going to my actual um, cleaning for, um, you know, get my teeth clean at my um, office. And I was just like, wow, like, like I know how to do this. Like, I can't, like, it was just so crazy to think that, like, I know what she's doing. I know what instrument she's doing. I know what radiograph she's taking. She took, like, four bite wings. She messed up a couple times. I, I counted. Um, she took four bite wings plus some. Um, like, it was just amazing. It's an amazing feeling to know that once you've, um, you know, gotten past the fear of clinic, once you start realizing that I'm doing the thing, like, I know what I'm doing, it's an amazing feeling, y'all. And I don't want you guys to think that, Dental hygiene is impossible because, baby, if I can do it, anybody can do it, okay? It is an absolutely amazing career to have. Not just the money. Of course, the money is good. But it's just so cool to be able to take care of people, to be able to, you know, clean someone's mouth and make them feel so much better than when they walk in. To It's amazing. And um, it's really a gift that keeps on giving. You will be amazed that what you find along the way and in your journey. Um, you know, my parents are always talking about it and people are like, oh, you're gonna be a dentist? And you have to tell them, no, I'm a hygienist. I don't wanna be a dentist. I don't I don't want that. Mm -mm, I'm done. Two degrees is good for me. Um, but yeah, um, just have fun. Make the most of it because once you are graduated, you're not gonna have that camaraderie from your friends. Uh, from uh, you know just being with your classmates because y'all all in the same boat together once you graduate you're going to be with people who are mastery level novice intermediate like it's going to be so many different levels of expertise and it's just going to be different of course you're going to have fun when you're working but it's like I said it's not the same as when you're in school you're going to miss them um, so take it all in enjoy the process you're going to have your ups and your downs I promise you it's not going to be easy but it's an amazing journey and I will I will never forget it. I'm so grateful and thankful to God that he allowed me to be here. So yeah, um, I'm excited for the next 11 months. So that's 11 more months of me taking you guys along with me on my journey. Uh, <laughs> there's no telling what's gonna happen. <laughs> I just pray that, you know, um, God doesn't take his hand off of me. Cause whew, baby, I saw them schedules. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed those tips. Um, if you, if you have any questions, concerns, anything at all, let me know y'all. Um, I'm just here. I'm here for you. You're here for me. You let me know what you need. Help me help you. And I will give you the best information that I know how, or I will just take you somewhere else, like show you someone else that can better answer that question. But if y'all have any suggestions, let me know, you know, comment. I'm not going to bite. I always respond to, um, to you guys um i'm here for it. if y'all need to message me on instagram y'all do that too let me know because if you have something that's more um personal i don't mind i don't mind letting you guys know what's up so y'all let me know i'm here for you and i appreciate you and everything like y'all have been amazing um supporters and i appreciate that so like i said like comment subscribe let me know what y'all want and i'll give it to you so thank you guys so much for this. Um, I hope you enjoyed my tips. If y'all, like I said, if y'all need anything else, let me know. I'll be here for you. Peace.